So let me introduce the Opel Mokka. Say, upon first glance, the stylish, sporty looks did grab my attention. However, jumping in the driver's seat, I was greeted with a bit of an underwhelming experience. I want to take you on that journey, what Opel is trying to offer you in this market. So as you can see, stylish lights, the nice squared off joy, if I can say it that way, and the black mirrors all give this car a little bit of a sporty appeal. So Opel's tried something a little bit different to offer you something stylish and good looking a little bit out of the ordinary because uh, the german brand has been a very conservative brand unlike in the opc range but come take a look at inside what it offers you so when you get into the opel mocker as you can see the germans have put things together quite well it hasn't got this big wow factor of having two huge ipad tablets in front of you but you do get a digital cluster and a touchscreen radio I'm about 1.85 and um, I have sufficient legroom. Everything is within reach. And it's not a car over the last two days that hasn't made me exhausted to drive, if I can put it that way. So everything feels ergonomically correct. Um, I can see everything that's in front of me. I've got nice touch radio controls as well as a heated steering wheel, which I've never ever found to put to use, but it's a nice to have and it's right there. Your cruise control, your paddles, as well as your indicator on the correct side, I'm assuming, which is on the left. But radio, nice touch screen, move down to the bottom, you have dials for your aircon. However, in order to delve into where your air flows, you need to click a menu button and you need to, of course, change that manually on the screen itself, but you can't change that at the bottom. With the lack of color, it does seem like it's just well put together if I can put it that way. So the Germans have done a little bit extra to give you this high black polished um, coating on most of everything in between, but they do pick up fingerprints quite easily. You have this lovely carbon looking plastic finish and then some soft touch dashboard and steering and side cladding. I can add for those that would like to have their hands drift and hold their bokeh's leg while they're driving, you don't have a gear lever and a handbrake to interfere with uh, your evasive maneuvers. Your gear lever, if I can put it that way, is a toggle switch to move between drive, neutral, and park as a button as well as manual. So it's a little bit different from the norm, but it's also moving in the direction of a lot of cars these days have these switches. The seats themselves do feel nice and comfortable. Of course, this car hasn't even got a thousand kilometers in the seat. So with time, you will see how it will wear, but I think with how the stitching looks and how the quality looks and how we've known Opel vehicles to age, um, I think it'll hold up quite well. They do hug you quite nicely. And with the vehicle, and I can say with personal experience, this vehicle does feel nice and agile on the road, even though it's a compact SUV. Um, you don't feel like you're being tossed around. So you feel like you're in your place and exactly where you need to be. Um, and also the driver comforts that you need, height adjustable seat, a steering wheel that has both reach and height adjustable. Everything is here and everything that you need is right in front of you. Your dash in the front of you has some nice features, such as um, giving you a warning for lane departure. It even gives you a sign if uh, you pass a speed sign, it registers and saves that sign directly onto your screen. So it helps you hopefully avoid some traffic fines. So that's the front of the mocker. What I do want to do is jump onto the back to show you how legroom looks. And I'm going to leave the seat exactly where it is. So let me get into the back of the Opel Mokka. So as I said, I'm a little bit on the large side, um, not width-wise, but height-wise. So my knees do dig in a little bit on the back of the seat. When I got in the very first time, I can say that the headrest did touch myself on the back, but by moving it out of the way, it's not an issue anymore. So it's not going to be a car that I'm going to want to sit in here for a long journey. But I can say someone a little bit shorter than me, like my girlfriend, who's about 1.5, she can easily jump in the back of here. Both seats at the back, of course, do have ISOFIX. There is no center 
Omni's to console, which is quite weird. Um, but there are two charging ports. So if you want to do keep it will entertain for the long distance, each and every person has a charging port at the back, which is quite nice. The windows go up quite high. So um, of course, everyone will feel secure and comfortable at the back. There are airbags, as I said, uh, all the way around, even in the side over here. So if something happens, God forbid, it's going to feel like you're in a bit of a jumping castle that is uh, quite a dangerous jumping castle because yeah, we wouldn't want you to be involved in an accident, but you are going to be safe, I think, in the Opel Mokka. Because Opel does actually pride themselves on their safety. But that is all at the back. I don't think there's any much more to say. I don't know what you can say about the back of a car. But let's go check the boot. So if you are a person like me, you would have probably grabbed right here and tried to pull the whole boot off of this car. But Opel have made it nice and simple. Even on the key, you get a button. However, if you feel at the back, next to the reverse camera, there is a button to pop the boot open. And it's nice and simple. So come take a look how it looks inside over here. Come take a look. 310 liters in the Opel Mokka. Very much on the average size. Uh, I think the only vehicle that's a little bit bigger than this would be the VW T-Cross. Um, so this is smack bang in the middle in this vehicle's category for boot size. You do get a space saver wheel to give you a bit of depth in the boot. But as I said, it's, it's, it's a car that I think can probably take about two suitcases quite easily at the back or three tog bags and a cooler box. Um, if you're gonna be a person that likes camping, if you have that type of lifestyle, a small four-man tent and some extra stuff, but you know, it is what you make of it and I'm sure that you'll be able to find space in this boot to be able to get away with what you need to. Parcel tray, which is a standard feature. It's not a, an optional extra like some cars on the market. And um, I don't know why I keep doing this. If you do uh, have to throw someone extra in the boot, I'm sure that this is something that you can definitely do. So unlike other cars, um, a boot release. I haven't seemed to have found this one because normally it's uh, kind of hidden in the base of the boot. But this car doesn't seem to have it hidden over there. But yeah, I'm not going to say it's going to be comfortable sitting at the back over there. But if you have to cram a sixth person into the mocker, um, don't do that because it's not safe. If I can sum this up, Opel have made a good attempt at putting together a nice compact SUV. It's a car that has agile performance, striking looks, however it lacks a little bit on the practicality side of things. At the price range, it's hard for me to justify at over 400,000 Rand, however, they're currently having a dealer assist on this car of up to 90,000 Rand, where you can climb into this. And for under 400,000 Rand, you're coming in below an entry level T Cross. And that's where this car does make sense. If you are looking for a lot more, there is the bigger brother, which is the GS model, which is a little bit more expensive than this, offering you a little bit more features. The peace of mind that you get is for this model, you get the 17 inch alloys, you get the 1.2 liter engine, you get an eight speed gearbox, and you get a nice, decent amount of extras on the vehicle, which is all standard features with the Mokka. And I will say, if you compare this to what the old Mokka looks like, this is a totally different vehicle. Totally, totally different. The performance is definitely something that has surprised me. And um, I look forward to seeing this car actually on the road because I am seeing it a lot more on the road. So what I would suggest is, if you are in the market for a compact SUV, take a drive, go stop down at William Simpson in Tukai, speak to the guys over there and um, ask them for a test drive. See what it's all about and don't just take my word for it. I'm sold. I think it's a good vehicle. I think it's great. It's up to you to decide that. Mm -hmm.